Okay, uh, that's just still a bit hot. Well, I just made myself a cup of tea and uh, waiting for it to cool down, I thought I would share the kettle I made it with. This is the Fire Maple Nimbus. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this lightweight but quite large kettle, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to say that Fire Maple did not send this to me. Uh, I picked this up myself because, well, I really liked the looks of it, and Fire Maple did not really want to promote it uh, by sending it out to me, but uh, I decided I'd buy it and uh, I'd share it with you because it's kind of an interesting little kettle. So as you can see, it is made of aluminum, spun aluminum. It is not anodized. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, what I liked about this was the size, number one, the cost, it's not very expensive at all for the size of the kettle and the quality, and it's lightweight. So let me just give you what few specifications I have for it, because of course I'm gonna put it in the video description below. As I mentioned, it is made of spun aluminum. It only weighs nine ounces. Nine ounces are 254 grams. Not bad considering it is a 1.2 liter kettle, 40.6 fluid ounces. I'll, I'll put the dimensions and everything in the video description, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's the size of the kettle, the shape of the kettle that I was looking for, and th when I got it, there were a few other features that I wanted to share with you, and uh, well, let's take a look at those now. I'm going to just refocus the camera in a little bit on the kettle so that you can see them better. All right, let's just take a look at a few of the features about this that make it a little bit different. So it does have two stand-up handles. They are made of stainless steel, as are the attachment points on the pot, and for that matter, the D-ring as well. That's the only non-aluminum pieces on here. Um, you know, the, that's not in itself unique, uh, but these are really, really quite stiff. They do have the little peak on the top, so they balance very easily, whether or not you're putting it on a ring of some type or a stick or a, a cord of some type to suspend it. You know, it works just well enough. I, I, I have been using it over alcohol stoves. I have not put it over a fire. I'm not sure that I will. I have so many other pots that are already blackened up. I don't need to blacken this one up as well. Tiny little pour spout here works very well. I think what I, I'll show you first is the shape of it that is makes it a little bit different. It's reminiscent of a more traditional Chinese teapot, and maybe that's part of what attracted it me to it. But, uh, well, let's take a look at the bale handles. So the bale handles right here, as you can see, have little, well, probably easier if I showed if I unfold them. And you can see they quite strong detent on those. Do you see the little extensions of the bale handles here? They have little tiny, I don't know if they're plastic or silicone or what they are, little nubs on them. And that's really just for making sure you don't scratch. What they do is when this is brought upwards, the bale handles are brought upwards, that locks the lid in place. The lid is just not falling off. So you don't have to worry about, as you pour from the kettle, having your lid fall forward and dumping out water or having to reach down with your fingers to hold it down to keep it from falling off. So yeah, that works out really well. There is a downside to that. And what I found is that when I have this on the heat, if I want to see where the water is in terms of how hot it is, if bubbles coming up off the bottom, rolling boil or whatever, um, you have to fold those down to get at it. I know, not a big deal at all, but uh, just a thing to be reminded of, you know, if you really want to check and check and check to see where your water is, you're going to have to either leave them down or fold them down when you go to do so. Now, there is a D-ring right here. It's plenty big, but this is a small disappointment. It doesn't stand up at all. There is no slot to help it stand up. I'll probably modify this a little bit. I may pinch it a little t harder so that they're tighter so it does stand up or create the slot with a Dremel tool just so I can keep it up. Uh, not at the end of the world. If you have a, a knife tip or a, a pointy stick or something, you can get in under it and you can get, that'll work well enough. Now, let me just open the pot up inside, which is wet because, uh, well, I just used it to make my tea. You can see it is a good size diameter opening. I don't, didn't measure that. I'm going to guess I will measure it and make sure it's in the specs. I believe it's 12 centimeters across. That's pretty big when you think about it. So while it is for kettle for boiling water, you probably could cook in this because it's so wide open. You can get down into the corners easy enough to clean it out. Yeah, it's actually would make a cook pot as well. 
Uh, let's just talk about that for a second, because I know somebody right now is thinking, yes, but that's made of aluminum. I'd never cook my food in that for fear of the uh, aluminum coming off and going into your food and, and you digesting it. Yeah, okay, reasonable, I understand that. But here's what I would say. If I'm just boiling water, I don't have any concerns whatsoever of aluminum leaching out into my food. If I'm actually cooking food in an aluminum pot like this, I'm probably going to use a wooden or a plastic utensil just to keep from scraping the bottom and just making sure. If you do those things, I don't think you have any concern for aluminum leaching into your food. Okay, so like I said, not a whole lot to show you. That's pretty much it. Let's wrap it up. All right, just a short video on the Fire Maple Nimbus 1.2 liter aluminum kettle. That's all I really wanted to do is to share that with you. As I mentioned, I'll put the specs in the video description below as well as the link at Fire Maple where you can take another look at this. I think it's $35 Canadian if that interests you. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's all there is to it. So what I'll do now is just open it up. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. I'm going to finish my cup of tea off because it's probably cooled down to the right point. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.